PS150 is a speakeasy on Pataling Street in Chinatown, Kuala Lumpur. Housed behind an odd-looking, possibly haunted toy store, step through the toy store and rewards await ye. The drink menu is divided into five cocktail styles, vintage, classic, tiki, disco, and contemporary. My traveling companions and I learned the hard way that these drinks are not the weak, watered-down varieties found in the other parts of town that cater to tourists. These drinks are handcrafted, mixed with skill, and could knock out a bear. There we go. Nice. Wow, look at that blue flame. Hell yeah. That's cool, guys. Love it. Very romantic. Bukit Malawati, or Malawati Hill, is a fort that was constructed in the 1500s. It's strategically important due to its position at the mouth of the Selangor River, which drains into the Strait of Malacca. In the late 1700s, cannons were added to further fortify against the Dutch. It didn't work, and the Dutch came anyways, and built this handsome lighthouse, which is still in use today. But honestly, we came for the breathtaking views and the silvered leaf monkeys and long tail macaques, which have all but taken over. Yeah. Our home base was in Bangsar village, but near the end of the trip we decided to explore some of the other neighborhoods and spots around city center, such as Little India, Pataling Street, and Jalan Alor Food Street, which provided an entirely different experience. This is a popular hangout for locals and tourists alike, a great place to get some street food, see some live music, dance, shop, and of course, people watch. Thank you. 
Kajilan Gombak, the old aboriginal road to the Genting Highlands, we hoped to visit the Orang Asli Museum that showcases the history and tradition of the indigenous Orang Asli people. But sadly, it was closed for renovations. That's the canopy. You can see uh, Adam and Robin back there with our bikes. And you could hear the jungle. Look at that big trees. There's an art to finding the right balance between packing as light as possible and having everything you need. Time to rethink my oh shit kit. Within just a couple of hours of traveling down the coast to Malacca earlier in the trip, my knees and forearms got pretty roasted by the relentless, vengeful sun. And that was with a pretty liberal application of SPF 50 sunscreen. Sunscreen was fine in Vietnam, but Malaysia is much closer to the equator. Here, you really need long sleeves and pants. On this particular road trip to the Genting Highlands, it was hot. Real hot when we started out in the morning, but as we ascended the mountain, and especially by evening, it was cold. Lessons learned in being ready for extreme heat and cold. Located at 1800 meters above sea level, on the peak of Mount Ulu Kali, not far from Kuala Lumpur, Genting Highlands is a resort with casinos and theme parks. Kind of like a baby mountaintop Las Vegas, but without all the Elvis impersonators. Honestly, we found it to be a little overstimulating, but extremely interesting and well worth the trip. Whoa. My traveling companions had plans with their wives and families for the next few days, so I took the hint and decided to scram. I booked a flight to Phuket. Phuket is the southernmost point of Thailand, and Rawe Beach is the southernmost point of Phuket.
is a working beach. You won't see jet skiers or surfers, but you will see fishermen bringing in the catch as they've done for centuries. You can find boat tours and Muay Thai training centers. Phuket was never colonized by any European nation, but they sure seem to know what we like. Beaches, cocktails, excellent food, and exotic places to relax. Honestly, four days wasn't enough, and it was kind of hard to leave. I told myself, if I don't leave right now, I might never. 